Now, how does the DBS work? How does deep brain stimulation work? Well, we actually don't know the answer to that question. It turns out that we put these tiny little electrodes into brain regions and we introduce essentially white noise. And we can change the noise that we introduce by making the pulses longer or shorter. We can give them at faster or slower frequencies. We can turn up the volume or the voltage of these devices, and we get varying effects, side effects and benefits when we do this. And when we stimulate in different regions of the brain, we get different benefits and different side effects. And it turns out that for the Parkinson patient today, we've learned so much from all the people who have had the operations before you that these benefits can be translated so we can tailor the therapy to try to target the symptoms that you wanted improved prior to the operation. Now, how does it actually work? Well, when we turn these devices on, it makes a little field, almost like a sphere, like a globe. A field of electricity comes out of the tip of one or more of these electrodes, and it affects several of the different cells it affects the chemicals, it affects everything that's within that sphere. And we believe that we're changing the conversations between different brain regions. And so if we take those little tiny microelectrodes that the tip of which is about the size of a hair, we crawl down and we listen to those cells singing, they're singing songs. And by introducing electricity, into the brain, into this globe, into this sphere area, we can change the song that they sing. And the songs that they sing are very important to the absolute function, to the outcome for patients. And so we believe that in some eloquent way, we're altering these brain conversations. And so, so we might say that what we do in DBS is we eavesdrop on the cells. And, you know, eavesdropping usually isn't a nice thing, but in this case, it's a great thing. We eavesdrop on these cells. We try to um, present uh, an electrical stimulus within this globe-like, this sphere-like field and change this abnormal conversation. And by changing the abnormal conversation, we seem to be improving the symptoms of patients. There are researchers now worldwide, internationally, chasing down the mechanisms of DBS. And it turns out they're very complicated. Some of the cells get inhibited or blocked. Some get stimulated. Some of the fiber bundles, these pipes that go between different regions, we can actually stimulate. And what we've learned in Parkinson disease, we're taking into many other neurological disorders like Tourette, and obsessive compulsive disorder and depression. And so because of these lessons we're learning from electrical stimulation of the brain, now we're beginning to develop and translate these discoveries to help other patients. And so the Parkinson patients have provided the basis for understanding this therapy, for continuing to research it, and, and we're going to provide, I believe, the, the, the theoretical and rational basis to actually improve people with other neurological disorders. And so we have the patients who have participated in the trials and participated in this therapy to thank for that.